Hey, the rollout of the B-21 was a global event. Despite being a rather underwhelming ceremony, hundreds of articles appeared online and plenty of videos appeared on YouTube giving an extended coverage. Honestly, if I'm seeing another one, I'm going to throw up. Yeah, all these articles and videos have one point in common. They are based on utterly nothing. There is a cosmic lack of information about this aircraft. Literally, what we have is just a picture from the front, where you basically don't see anything. So, what's not to like about this situation? Let's make a speculation video. Even because I actually expect a B-21B relatively early in the life of this aircraft. Please, please, please stop with waxing lyrical about Jack Northrop being a genius that, before everyone else, understood the advantages of the flying wing, only to be shut down by a conservative and bureaucratic air force and exacting revenge decades after that with the B-2 and the B-21. Sorry, Jack, I know you're a great guy, nothing personal. The flying wing is a pretty trivial development, okay? There are German and Russian contemporaries of Jack Northrop that had the same idea, and it is an idea that every aeronautical student plays with when it actually learns how the overall drag of the aircraft is working. Yes, because when you're first shown one of these diagrams, uh, then it's uh, pretty much obvious. Lift is fixed, because lift basically have to compensate for the weight of the aircraft. So if you reduce the surface of everything that is not provided in lift, you will heavily reduce the drag and the overall efficiency will be much higher. But this is just one of the points of project. For example, there is little room inside the wing. You need to have a very thick aerofoil and a thick aerofoil means slow speed and if you're using a thin aerofoil you won't have room inside one may think why we are not seeing them in the civilian market because it's not certifiable you can't empty a passenger flying wing quick enough because the access is more complicated and the passengers are just beside the fuel. So in case of accident, the fuel will probably flow into the cabin and uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry, this is the editing gas. I actually realized that I didn't speak of the problem of the yaw instability that is one of the aerodynamic features of the flying wing so, and the solution of this problem came with the introduction of fly-by-wire and artificial stability and this made the aircraft like the B-2 or the B-21 actually possible and fly by crap! And honestly, I don't know why I'm even telling you this, because the reason why the B-2 and the B-21 are flying wings has nothing to do with aerodynamics. It's all about stealth. Stealth aircraft like the F-22 or the F-35 are detectable by low frequency radar in, and there is a physical reason behind that that is quite complicated. I am not sure to understand completely the mathematics myself, but in practice, if the size of an aircraft element is shorter than eight times the wavelength of the radar radiation, then we start having resonance phenomena, the radar energy being re-emitted by that specific aircraft element. An X-band radar, which is pretty much the standard for every combat aircraft, has a wavelength of a few centimeters. So basically every panel that is bigger than this doesn't have this problem. VHF and UHF radar have wavelengths that are in the order of half a meter or uh, even a meter. So you may understand that you need to have a continuous element of a about eight meters to avoid this kind of resonance. This is the reason why you need an aircraft that is larger than a fighter and has uh, fewer short lines. Now it's more complicated than this, it depends on the electric continuity and the material that is filling uh, the gaps between the panels and so on, but 
That is a rule of thumb. If you want to build an aircraft that is also hard to detect for these long uh, wavelength uh, radars, low frequency radars, you need to have a relatively larger aircraft with relatively simple and clean lines. One of the few things that we know is because it's been declared by the Air Force as being the plan is the fact that the B-21 is going to replace the B-1, the B-2, but not the venerable B-52, which is basically mortal. What's the logic behind that? Well, it's about weapons. The B-21, since it can penetrate air defenses uh, being highly detectable, will be using short-range weapons. The B-52 will be the truck for transporting and launching long-range weapons. Why you need both? Well, because they have different characteristics. Typically a short-range weapon with a pilot taking the decision of which specific target to attack is more versatile, more precise than a long-range weapon that is basically launched and often can be updated mid-course, but when it's launched, is gone. If the target, for example, disappears, will be wasted. So as the state of technology today, you need both. So the US Air Force is expecting to buy about 100 aircraft, but I do expect uh, a B-21B or equivalent quite early in the life of this aircraft, and this could could actually increase the numbers. It is also worth noting that Australia is also interested in purchasing the aircraft, which is uh, something quite interesting because uh, there are just three countries in the world with bombers today, uh, United States, Russia and China. This is also interesting from a geopolitical point of view, but this is well beyond this video. So there is this lame joke about the B-21 that is not actually the B-21, but it is the B-2.1. Really, really funny. <laughs> So no, the point is that while the aerodynamic configuration is similar, uh, the internals will be completely different and the capabilities will be completely different. We have uh, seen that the aircraft is slightly smaller and probably the payload will be slightly smaller as well. But this is beyond the point. I mean, the systems aboard on the B-21 will be much more advanced than those on board of the B-2. The B-21 will be in a different class. One of the things that the B-21 is expected to be better than the B-2 is the reduction of the enormous logistic tail that the aircraft has. Uh, the B-2 has a very, very delicate coating, so the aircraft requires specific hangars, and every few years the entire stealth coating needs to be stripped, the aircraft expected and reapplied. And mind, all these logistics around the B-2 are targets for an opponent. The B-21 also drawing on the lessons of the B-35 coating, which is effectively much more durable, probably won't require any of these attentions. And then the B-21 will be a natively network-centric aircraft, like the F-35, something that the B-2 wasn't. The Air Force expect the B-21 to be capable of being one of the main nodes of this big network that is going to connect pretty much everything on a multi-domain battlefield. And if this is true, the capability of translating from one type of data link to another will be one of the key capabilities that will be given to the aircraft. Or rather than having an airliner converted to be an um, electronic communication hub, you will have a survivable aircraft being the node. And this is quite important. Another interesting element is that the program around the B-21 seems to be pretty much on time and on budget, so probably Northrop has to teach something to Lockheed Martin on how you run a project. But we have to say that in this case, Northrop and the Air Force have chosen a very reasonable approach. The B-21 is uh, an evolutionary aircraft, not a revolutionary aircraft. According to some declaration, it seems that the aircraft is borrowed heavily on the experience and the electronics developed for the F-35 and is also going to reuse the F-35 engine. 
obviously without an afterburner. On this channel we have already discussed the approach to software that has been used in the B21 program. I suggest you to uh, watch the video. But it seems that finally, even in the United States, an open architecture has been implemented with the software. If this is true, any upgrade, any update, any bug fixing will be much easier than for a conventional aircraft. Mind, it was expected to be like this on the F-35 II and we all know how it ended. So the fact that the aircraft has been built with this evolutionary mindset will probably mean that we will see a B-21B quite early in the life of the aircraft. There is one point that comes to mind. The variable cycle engines will be ready in a few years and that's something that you may want to install toll on an aircraft where range and endurance are actually very important. So if you are still here, thank you very much and an even bigger thank you to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or by being a member. You can support the channel also by buying a model from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I will get a small percentage of the sale with no extra cost for you. There are plenty of other videos dedicated to stealth on the channel that are going to appear beside me and clicking on those videos is another way to support the channel. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.